All right. It's 2.30. I guess uh, we can get started. So welcome to um, Renaissance DEF CON and welcome to this class, this lecture, in which um, I will give you a tour through our Renaissance Synergy ISDE. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Axel Wolf. I work um, as a tools engineer in the uh, IOTBU in Santa Clara, in the Renaissance Electronics America's headquarters. This is my uh, third DEF CON already. Um, I joined Renesis about six years ago. And um, I had, before I moved into the ITBU, I was in this, the re regular uh, Renesis Electronics Americas group as the tools marketing manager. And before that, um, I was with uh, NXP and Philips Semiconductors, as well as uh, Siemens and Infineon Technologies. Uh, for about eight years each, always dealing with microcontrollers, always dealing with the tools. So that's what I like to do. That's my, my background. Okay, um, you've seen a number of uh, classes now. You've seen the slide every time. Uh, basically, this presentation, um, since it's dealing, with, it's dealing with Synergy, it's um, engaging at the platform level because we're uh, launching Synergy as a, as a platform, as, as you've heard. And basically, when it comes to uh, the ISDE, which is essentially the development environment in which you will uh, create your Synergy projects, there's two uh, key elements in there that will really accelerate your, your project and your design. And one is the Synergy project generator, and the other one is the Synergy project editor. And especially the editor because this is where, I don't know if you've seen, maybe you've been in Brandon's class or some of the other classes, the project editor is really where all these configurators live that um, you can use to, to customize and to configure all the, the rest of the SSP, which is the Synergy software package. And as soon as you get that done, including setting up your, your RTOS threads and all that, um, that reduces your design time, gives you more time to innovate and differentiate. So I'll, I'll talk about all these, these configurators later on. So this is the agenda for the next uh, 50 minutes or so. Um, I'll give you an introduction of uh, where the ISDE fits as part of the overall Synergy platform. Um, just one slide each on the Synergy uh, software package and, and the Synergy MCUs, just because I don't know which other classes you've seen, seen so far. Uh, then ISDE, IDE via ISDE versus ISDE, why are, we, why are we calling it ISDE? And then what are the different components that make up um, our ISDE? And then I'll take you on to the tour. We'll um, look at the project generator, uh, how to do a new Synergy project. And we'll see how that gets us into the project editor, where we can configure our project. And then um, what happens when you, you know, regenerate that project content, uh, what's going on. And I'll give you some other uh, debug feature highlights. All right. So basically, um, Renaissance Synergy is, is a new platform, as you've heard now. And the main values about it is to accelerate the development, reduce the cost of ownership, and lower the barriers to entry. And the main uh, components of the SSP is the software, for one, as you've probably heard by now, the microcontrollers, where everything runs on, the tools and kits. And this is where this presentation fits in. I'm not going to talk about the kits so much, but um, about the software tools. Then you have the solutions, which is your, your project examples and your, your, um, your project examples and your, your product application examples. And then the Synergy Gallery, where uh, that's your, your web portal, where you can download the ISDE, download the SSP, application notes, additional project templates, and all that stuff. So just in case you haven't attended a session that covered the SSP, just very briefly, uh, the Synergy software package is a, is a layered uh, architecture. On the bottom, sitting right on top of the MCU, you have your, your board support package. On top of that, you have your hardware abstraction layer, or HAL, 
uh, drivers. This is the, the driver level. And on top of that, you have um, the ThreadX operating system with the various communication stacks um, for USB and Ethernet. You have FileX and GUIX, and also the Synergy application framework, as well as some other functional libraries. And then to the side over there, uh, you have these add-ons. We have qualified software add-ons, QSAs, and verified <coughs> software add-ons. So those can come from, from third parties that, um, that can contribute to, to the platform. And on top of it all, you have uh, the, the APIs through which you access all this good software. All right, that was SSP. Now, um, the microcontrollers themselves, um, you may have heard it in some other presentation. There's four series in um, the Renesas Synergy microcontroller uh, platform. Uh, three of them are based on the, uh, on the M4, Cortex M4, which is the S7, S5, and S3. And then the S1 is based on the M0+. Plus. Um, and those are the different series in, in the Synergy microcontroller families. Okay, so you probably all know what an IDE is, an Integrated Development Environment, and why are we calling it ISDE? Well, because, I mean, we've had eSquared Studio for a while now, for about, you know, about three years or so, and it's available, of course, for the other architectures, the RL78, the RX, the RH850, and all that. But with, uh, with Synergy, when we started to add functions in there for Synergy, we added so many what we think are solution-oriented components to it that we just felt we had to kind of give it an upgrade. And instead of just a, a regular IDE, we're calling it an ISDE now for in Integrated Solution Development Environment. So that's all there is to that. So what is the ISDE made of? Um, one big component, as you can imagine, is, is e Squared Studio itself. And then we basically went ahead and added a whole bunch of new plugins to that because uh, as you probably know, eSquared Studio is based on Eclipse and it's a nice extensible framework and you can easily add um, new components to it. So for Synergy, we, we added uh, preparation phase, build phase, and debug phase plugins to our existing eSquared Studio product. And I, I have the SSP as a kind of a dotted circle here because it's technically not part of the ISDE, but once, once you bring the two together, they really work very close in sync. You, you, sometimes you can't tell, is this, is this part of SSP or is this part of ISDE? Because it's, it, it works so well together. Um, and so these SSP packs that uh, are, come in these um, SIMSYS pack formats that we, we adopted from ARM. ARM has a SIMSYS standard. Part of that is these, this pack format and we, we adopted that because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So these SSP packs is how the um, Synergy software package is delivered and uh, integrated into the ISDE. Okay, so some of the uh, preparation phase plugins that we're going to look at. Uh, the first one, like I mentioned, is this Synergy project generator um, that gets you started with a new project. And then we have these various configurators that help you configure your project once you started it. Um, so you can con configure your, your BSP board support package. You can configure the, uh, the clock tree. Um, the pins, and as well as the, uh, your RTOS or HAL or uh, the SSP modules, um, the individual modules per se, actually. So I'll show you how that all works. And the last one is the Interrupt Control Unit Configurator or ICU Configurator that helps you set up your interrupts. For build phase, it's mainly um, integrating the, the two tool chains that we're using right now. One is the uh, GNU ARM tool chain, which obviously is a, is a very common uh, compiler tool chain for, for the ARM platform, as well as we made sure that the IR compiler integrates well because we have a very close relationship with IR. They support all our other um, architectures, both from the older NEC side as well as from the Renesas side. And so also we, we were working with them very closely and the other thing is the smart manual where uh, for Synergy software modules, um, it helps you to avoid going through all the lengthy documentation. I'll show you later how that works. 
And then on the debug side, uh, we uh, integrated the Segger JLink debug support. For since the uh, Synergy microcontrollers are based on on ARM, um, the Segger JLink was an kind of an obvious choice to go with as a as a debug probe because it's it's so commonly used. Uh, so that's our, our standard debug probe. And then we have various uh, uh, plugins here that make it easier for, uh, to do RTOS aware debugging uh, to see what's going on in your, in your real time system um, as you're doing your, your debugging. So one is just the regular RTOS awareness. Then there's a thing called the EPK, which is the execution profile kit. And then there's also um, a separate executable called TraceX. Uh, from Express Logic, so I'll I'll cover all of these in a little more detail. This is this is an overview. So let's uh, let's get started with with the tour. And and I have to say, this is a lecture, and it's it's going to be a PowerPoint tour. Although usually I like to do real demos, but it's it's just not going to be possible with this setup. Um, but you know that we do have plenty of labs for Synergy. So if you want to really use the ISD hands-on, then I encourage you to um, attend one of those labs and you can actually play with it hands-on yourself. Okay, actually, before I get into that, any, any questions up to this point? Nope, okay, good. So I've been talking about the, uh, the Synergy project generator. So that is how, that's the quickest way, or actually the only way, to really start a new project inside the ISD for a Synergy target. And um, essentially it brings up a, a, a dialog that lets you uh, configure some high level, uh, specify some high level characteristics of your new project. For example, obviously you have to give your project a name. Um, then you have to choose the tool chain. So either right now we support, like I said, the GCC or the, the IR compiler. And then you have to apply a license file. Um, when you download the SSP from the Synergy Gallery, there's an evaluation license already included in there. So all you have to do at this point is just point or browse to that um, license file inside your installation, and then you're, you're good to go. Very good question. Okay, very good question. Want some candy? What is the difference between evaluation license and other types of licenses? So there is basically three types of licenses. The evaluation license, and it, it all has to do with, um, with the protected uh, source code. As you know, we're, we're dealing with um, I mean, there, you get a lot of software in this package. So we have all the ThreadX. Uh, NetX, all the Xware from Express Logic. We have um, our own framework drivers, and some of these um, are protected or encrypted. And so, when you have an Eva license, what you can do is you can build all these. It's everything's in there in source form, but um, you are with an Eva license not able to view those sources. So basically, you cannot see the source. You can build your projects with the source, but you can't see them. Um, if you, on the gallery as well, if you register for a, um, um, for a production or a developer's license, which is also no cost, you just have to provide a little more information about your company, uh, then you'll be able to uh, view the sources when you are in, when you're editing or when you're um, uh, stopped in a debug session. So then you're able to view the sources. You still can't modify or edit or anything because it's, it's not a source license. So that's the last type of license is if you really want, feel like you, you need to uh, be able to modify and, and change the sources, then you can, you can purchase a source license. That's obviously uh, a commercial product. So. Um, those are the three different types of licenses. Okay, and basically, whenever you uh, whenever you load the license file, e Square Studio knows what kind of what kind of privileges you have, and basically it, it behaves like that. Yes. You, you can see the encrypted code. See breakpoints on that. Like if you're debugging a TCP/IP problem, mm -hmm. and you have you can actually see in in the 
socket code what's happening. Yeah. Can you break point to You can if you have yes, you can question. Any question? question is uh, can you can you put a breakpoint in the protected source? And the answer is yes, if you if you have at least the um, the production or developer's license, because then you can view you can view the source and you can also see it in your debug session. So yes, um, if you have that, and again, it's it's no cost. Yes, question back there. Yeah. So with the evaluation version, can you change header files for configuration? For example, GUI X, you can change. Uh, thread yes. So, so header files. So I'll we'll, once we come to the configurators, um, I'll show you that. And so. That def definitely you can do. You don't need to. You don't need to change the source for that, right? You can. You no, can... for ThreadX you need to, right? So for ThreadX, let's say or GUIX, if you change the thread priorities, mm -hmm. you need to recompile the library. Well, you can. You can always build. Okay. You can always build. I mean, even with Eva license, you can. You can build all the. the oh, I see. Okay. The source. It's mm -hmm. just you can't. You can't change it, right? Or you can can't view it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. So, that's screen number one. So then uh, the next one is. Um, you'll be able to choose which version of SSP you want to use for that project because after, I mean, right now we just came out with 1.0, right? But after a while there might be other versions and you might, you might choose the latest version, you might not because it, you know, for some reason you, you may want to build it with an older one. So this is where you, you pick your SSP version. And then you have uh, two more fields which is one for board and one for device. So um, if and this is where you basically, the board selection is where you pick your board support package. So for example, um, this selection is for the development kit for the S7G2. If that's the target you're going to use, that's what you would pick. If you have any other uh, target, you would pick that. Uh, for example, every one of you, when you checked in, you got a starter kit for the S7. So you would use the S7G2 SK as the board support package. And like Brandon mentioned in the previous session, if in case you saw that, um, there's also a way for you to to do your own BSP. Obviously, once you you know to get started, you would use one of our boards probably. But after a while, if you have if you spin your own board, you might want to have your own board support package, and we will provide you with with tools to do that. Based you base it on one of ours, but then you basically customize it so that it fits your exact needs. And once you've done that, then you would be able to select your own BSP here in this field. And then the device selector, um, basically this is if you, if you, you can also uh, choose to uh, pick a custom board, a custom user board, if you like. And you can basically um, tell eSquared Studio which device you're working with. So here you have these, these different series that I mentioned earlier. And you pick the exact um, uh, package and memory device that, you, that you're working with, and off you go. Yes? Mm -hmm. is that part of this tool? Is that a separate tool? Or how, how do you do that? No, there's a separate tool. It's a separate, it's in, it's in the form of an app node right now. It's, it should be up on the gallery now. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not, currently it's not integrated into eSquared Studio. We might do that in the future. Right now it's just a command line tool um, that lets you create a custom BSP. And so currently that is not, not integrated, but we're working on it. Okay, cool. One more question? Yes. So on the debugger, it looks like the uh, J-Link arm then is built into that uh, eval kit. Yep. So when you do your own hardware then, um, I mean, how many debuggers do you support right now or how many will you? So, so right now it's, uh, it's J-Link only. Okay. Um, but the field is there for in the future we can, we can add other debuggers to it. There could be some, some open source ones or, or one obvious choice would be the iJet from IR at some point. Okay. So currently, um, JLink is what we what we started out with, but it's we're planning to extend that in the future. Well, that answers one question because you know we have that thousand dollar tool budget, and one sure. of the items was the JLink debugger. So it sounds like right. we probably want to get that then. Right. So I mean, um, a lot of our starter kits and, and development right. kits actually have a built-in right JLink OB, but of course, as, as soon as you right. want to connect your to your own target, you would need so that would yeah. be the one you'd probably start with. Yep. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so um, another selection you can make here is the actually the version of the tool chain because mm, just like with the SSP, you might choose to 
uh, use a specific version of the IR or the, uh, the GNU toolchain um, in order to, to compile your project. So we give you that option here. Uh, in, in the case right now, this particular version is actually what we did test the SSP against when we, before we released it. So it, it's recommended to use this version of the compiler, which is actually part of the installation process. If you install DSquared Studio, um, if you download that from the gallery and you install that, the compiler, this, this particular version of the Google compiler is part of the installer. So it's very easy to just install that as part of the eSquared Studio installation. And the last step you got to do before your project is finally uh, created is to pick from what we call um, project templates. So in this screen, there's, um, oops, there's a selection for the uh, for variety of project templates. And you can also call them demo applications. So basically, um, they will give you a starting point uh, for that particular board you, you picked and for a particular uh, application. It could be just, just a basic BSP or it could be, uh, uh, you know, BSP but you, you already want, you know you want ThreadX in there already. Or you could have um, more elaborate applications like the weather panel or a thermostat or um, what else do we have, a web server. So these, these um, project templates, they give you a good, good starting point. Um, and you just pick the one that's closest to the kind of project you, you want to do. And when you download the SSP, there's only a, a few of them in there, but then there's separate um, additional installers on the gallery that, that allow you to add additional project templates to your, to your installation. Okay, so after you finish that project generator, um, your project is created for you, and you will see it uh, created in the Project Explorer view inside your workspace in eSquared Studio. So the project is created in the workspace and uh, this big window in the middle here is what we call the project, the Synergy Project Editor. And the reason for that is because it's basically a, a, tabbed, a tabbed editor inside um, Eclipse, which these different tabs is, is where you access the various configurators. So we, we'll go through, through each of these tabs and I'll show you how this works. And the big difference between um, the project generator and the project editor is that, that um, the project generator you would only use one time. The first time you create a project, that's, you would use that um, and then you wouldn't do that again, but you can come back to the project editor at any time and make additional configurations or add, uh, uh, add new modules or, uh, so that is, that is basically a, a process you could do over and over again until, you know, uh, through the life cycle of your project. Okay. All right, so let's look at the first tab, which is um, the BSP tab. So that's, that's what we, we call the BSP configurator. And you, you have in the top part here, there's actually a, uh, uh, you, you will get mirrored the, the options that you made when you first created the project. Um, you see the SSP version, the board version, or the device version. And by the way, this could actually be a project that you didn't even do yourself. You might have gotten it from a colleague or you might have gotten it from Renesas. You know, you can, it's very easy with Eclipse to export projects and import projects. So this might be a project you didn't even create yourself. You might have gotten it from somewhere. And you can review you know, what, was the, what was the foundation of that project when it was first created. Uh, but in, in addition to these selections here, um, you can also make configurations on, on the Properties tab. And so this is, this is a fundamental concept that we're using throughout these whole, all these configurators, is that in the tabbed editor, we'll show you something, a value or a, a module or something. And in the properties view, which is a another view inside Eclipse, we will show you the, uh, the properties of that particular object that you've highlighted. And then you'll be able to change the properties in the properties view and that's how you configure objects or components or things inside your project. So you'll see that, you'll see that coming over and over again. Um, so for example, for the BSP, you would be able to, to configure things like stack size or, or um, uh, certain register values uh, that you could, might want to change if, if you so choose. 
the next tab is the clock configurator. So every MCU obviously has a, a clock tree and um, you need to be able to configure the clock tree in order to uh, supply all the peripherals with the desired frequencies. So what we did on the clocks tab uh, in the clock configurator is we, we give you a graphical view of the, of the clock tree and you are, you're able to um, make changes right here on this configurator. Basically, for example, you would change um, clock sources, you would change PLL dividers, you would change multipliers, things like that, until um, basically you, you have your clock tree and the outputs, the modules, just the way you want it. Um, there's also some dependencies uh, in here, dependency checking. So for example, uh, the USB clock, for example, it needs 48 megahertz to work for the USB. So if you configure the clock tree and this changes away from 48 megahertz, then it would show up in red and it would basically give you an indication that um, it's a warning essentially that something you need to watch out for. It might not, what you're trying to do here might not work. So throughout all these configurators, we have uh, constraints and we have dependencies that are checked and that are flagged to you as the user to guide you on this on this configuration process. Okay, so that's the clock configurator. So now the pin configurator is another key um, element of, of the uh, project editor. So this one um, is where you we configure all the, all the pins and do your pin mapping. So actually, you might even do this before you even do your, your um, your schematics or any hard, you might actually do that, the hardware designer with the software designer together before you even lay out your board because as we know, these, these MCUs, they have so much functionality on them that it's impossible to bring it all out, right? So all the pins are multiplexed and the, the trick is to essentially get, um, get all the components that you need, all the interfaces and all the, the, the ports out that you need and to ha not have any conflicts. So this is what the pin configurator here uh, is here to do for you. So essentially the way it would work is it works as you, um, uh, when you, when you do your project, it loads the specific pin configurator that matches the device that you've chosen. And so the pin configurator knows exactly which peripherals are on there. And so you, you go, through the peripherals that you need in your project, and obviously probably you would start with the ones that eat up most of the pins, like an external bus or an ethernet controller or something like that, because those are the things you must get in and they use up a lot of pins. And so you, you, you select that peripheral and then it, it brings up in this, in this pin configuration pane, it brings up all the, the pins that are associated with that peripheral and then you assign it to a real device pin. And sometimes you actually, have more than one option. Sometimes, you know, we give you, because we know about the multiplication situation, sometimes we give you two or three options to route a certain peripheral pin to a device pin. And that allows you to, to be more flexible with your assignments. So if your UART comes out on two pins that are already taken, then you might be able to route them to two other pins where it's not taken yet. So that's how you're mapping out your pins. And in this uh, package view, in this package view, this shows you a graphical representation of your, the, the package that this micro is in. This happens to be uh, the 224 pin BGA, but depending on the package, it'll, it'll look different. And essentially, uh, the pins that you're assigning, you, you get a, a graphical representation in this, in this package view. And it's actually interactive because if you, you know, if you click on any of these pins, that brings the respective pin into focus here and you could change it that way as well. So like I said, those, those uh, package views look different depending on what, what uh, MCU you're using. Um, so this one we just saw, this is the 144 pin LQFP, this is the 64 pin LQFP. And so basically um, that is a good visual representation of, of what's going on um, on the chip, on the pin level. And I mentioned um, one task of the pin configurator is to uh, identify and resolve any conflicts you might have. 
So uh, as I mentioned earlier, if, if you're assigning pins and they're already assigned for something else, you, you, know, you get warning or flags that say, hey, you, this is not going to work. And there's a separate view here, which is called a pin, pin conflict view. So it'll show you uh, the pin conflicts here. And you can go into the pin configurator and basically reroute that peripheral or free up some other peripheral or basically make it work that way. OK, then, so we've talked about BSP, we've talked about clock, we've talked about pins. So the, the, threads, the threads tab is probably the most important tab in this configurator or in this project editor because there's, lot, there's lots going on on this one. So let's, let's look at what's, what's, what are the different elements here. So you have, this is the threads tab, and you have a, a threads pane over here, and then there's a... Uh, a, a pane here for, for modules and a pane here for objects. So this is obviously has to do with, with uh, ThreadX and the real-time operating system. So the, the first thing you would do is, and, and you can see, so basically here in this, in this threads pane, the very first entry is called HAL slash common. So even if you're not planning on using an RTOS, if you're not planning on using ThreadX, you will always have this, this HAL slash common thread. It's not really a thread because we're not using the RTOS, but, but it's, it's, it's basically, it might be a, your endless loop or something, right? Your super loop if you're not using the, the RTOS. So we, we still want to give you the option to uh, put HAL drivers into this, into this thread, so to speak. And so um, if you want to add a new a new driver or common module to this this area here, then you would you would select new, and then you would from a from the pull down menu that comes up you would pick you would bring in the drivers um, that that you want to bring in on that level on the HAL on the HAL level. So for example, you might have you know some are actually standard. So uh, uh, CGC, ELC, I/O port those are those are standard, and so here we brought in also the a real time clock driver. So that, that basically takes care of your, your HAL layer um, drivers. Then if you, if you are using an RTOS, then you need to create various threads that will be your, your RTOS threads. And you, you give them, you, you name them whatever you want. We could have a system thread, we could have an error log thread, temperature thread, whatever, whatever is going on in the application. And essentially, to these threads, you then also add um, uh, modules to it that go into that thread, SSP modules. So for example, if you highlight that system thread, then you can add, see this changes to system thread modules. And from the, from the pull down list here, if I say new, then I can add um, from the Synergy software package from the SSP, I can add uh, whatever modules framework or driver modules I, I need in that thread, I can add it to the thread. Uh, at the same time, um, you can also select uh, objects. So each, each thread can have objects like semaphores and mutexes and queues. And so if you need those, you can add those in, in the system, in the objects pane over here. So this is how you build your real-time operating system. Um, with the HAL common on the, as a foundation and then the various threads with whatever SSP drivers and framework modules you need in there. Yes? If I have my own module or code that I develop, should I have to put it into SSP before then? Or is that too directly? So if you, if you have... Yeah, your own, your own code... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. So yeah, the question was, what if I have, um, what, what, what about my own code? Um, can I also use the configurator to bring that in? And I believe the question is no, because it's not, it's not conforming to, it's not, it doesn't have the same format as our SSP mod. Well, 
if you're if you're a third party and you're developing some an add-on, right? Then that would be part of the part of the SSP. If it's if you're writing some some code that will live outside of the the SSP environment, then it would not be part of this. Do you want to? Do you want to? SSP so that other people could within the company could use it. Here, John. John's going to. I'll comment try on this and one. take a, a stab at this. Yes, I mean it's definitely something we considered as part of the architecture. Um, you know, as we're moving forward with this, that is definitely the plan: is to put the tools in place so that, I mean, as we said, all these are is uh, standard ARM SIMSYS packs. Okay, so to get them into the. Uh, configurator, there's an additional component that it's an XML configuration file that is where, you know, these properties dialogues are all populated from. And, you know, definitely we've got the plan that third parties will be able to put their own in as well as customers to get their own in. The entire architecture is based on this because we do want community support for this. We do want you to be able to pull your stuff in. We're looking at ways, you know, we might be looking at a couple different levels of this. One where you're able to kind of do some simple things within the ISD. And then there might be, you know, the way we do it right now is a bit more of a hand manipulation of and creation of that. But the short answer is at the moment, it's possible because we do it ourselves. It's not real pretty. Um, you know, we're quickly working to get that so all the third parties understand it. And we definitely have it on the roadmap to make that more friendly for everyone to pull their stuff into the, into the platform. That's the whole point of the SSP. Right. Okay. That was John Brabender, our principal engineer from our Durham office, helping me out. Yeah, another one? How do I set thread priorities and how do I tell, uh, tell it to use my uh, entry function for the thread? Yes, yes, very good. So how do I use, oh, that was on mic already. <laughs> okay. So. Um, the next, next step in this thread module, this is, this is a great segue, is actually the, the, the configuration portion. So right now you're just you're pulling in modules, but then uh, each of these elements that we talked about, um, threads, uh, modules, objects, they can also be configured just the same way as I showed you earlier with the BSP configurator. So if you, if you highlight a certain module, thread, or object in these panes, then what happens is in, in, the, in the properties view, the properties of this particular object, whatever it is, show up, and you're able to view the current configuration, and you're able to change it. You're able to modify it. And that's how, that's how you configure the drivers. That's how you configure the framework. That's how you configure the, the thread. So that would, you would set your, your thread priority and all that. If I highlight it, if I click the thread and I look at the properties, then that's, that you have the, prop the name there and the properties and everything of that particular thread. And that's how you, how you configure whatever object it is. Uh, so in this case, for example, I'm highlighting the, um, the I squared C driver, and I see the properties down here, and I'd be able to, if this was live, go in and change the properties, and it would, it would then so the configurations you make here, those all make changes to the configuration header files that are part of the SSP. And uh, when you regenerate, I'll show you that later, when you regenerate the project content, then those header files get updated. And when it actually, the module actually runs, then it, it reads the header file and, and knows how it's supposed to run. That's, that's the whole concept, yes? Okay, so two questions. One, the first question was, <laughs> what's the first question? Dependencies. Yes, dependencies, one. exactly, thank you. So yeah, dependencies, how, so we, we, we do have that built in. We have constraints and dependencies. So great segue again. Um, so if you, if you bring in a module and it requires something else, another module, or it requires some interrupts to be set, then you will, you will get a little, little red X here and you get a little X over here and as well as in the in the problems view and it'll say you know I, I need this or I need I need that to work properly and you can you can go and do it now 
the question might be, you know, if if you know if you guys already know I'm needing that module, why don't you just enable it automatically? But but if you attended Brandon's presentation, um, at a certain level, there might be different options underneath which one you want to take. You want to use the I squared C from the SPI, or you want to uh, from the SCI, or want the dedicated. So there's multiple options underneath. So we can't always answer that. We can't always make that decision for you. But will it show you those options like here that there's a problem with? I'm oh, sorry. Will, will it show you those options that you have the dependency choices basically, or you have? Well, to it'll deep? say, yeah, I need you know. Um, if you have a framework, it'll say I need a I need a uh, I need a, a timer driver. But it could it could be which which way you want to implement that is up to you essentially. So sometimes there's there's and if 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 the dependency is satisfied, then the the error will go away essentially. Okay. And, and the other quick question was yeah sorry when second you number regenerate code. Let's say you make changes here. Does it overwrite the common or the custom code you've added? Yes. To the header? So that's a very good question. Very good question. <laughs> Did you get one already? No. So the question was, ah, oh, it's on mic already. Uh, so any, basically anything that is SSP or SSP configured header files, those you are not supposed to edit because as soon as you hit, you know, generate project content or you build it, it gets re-extracted from the pack and it, it so you, you have a clean build. Um, any, any, um, there are certain files in which you can make modifications, like there are certain entry files into the HAL, HAL entry, or, or into the uh, threads. There you can make your, your own modification, or add your own code, and it, it will stay. But those, in the SSP user manual, it will tell you exactly which, which, um, which files those are that you can edit. Everything else is, is getting re-extracted. Now, there's a source, there's a source folder in there as well. That is completely yours. So there's not, you know, in the source folder, anything you put there is your own code, and that will not get overwritten. Yeah, there's another question back there? Yeah, if I have a... Oh, I'm sorry. John, you want to... There's a quick rule on that. If SSP is in the directory path, don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, right. that's what, everything that you can touch doesn't have SSP in the directory path, period. You yep. know, and we did make sure you had entry points for anything you needed to access to. So just be aware of that. Okay. All right. If you want to make changes to existing module or a driver, then you want to copy it out of the SSP. Right. And we, we, we have an app note that we have prepared or are preparing. It's okay. is already up there. So if you, you know, what do I do if I want to customize a driver? I want to make it my own. Then you follow, you basically follow this app note. It'll show you how to do it. So if I have I2C, if I have I2C driver and if I need to access it from two different threads, because I have two chips on I2C bus, temperature, and accelerometer, for example. Can I add uh, modules to both the threads? And the second question is, uh, if I can do that, how do I make sure it's a thread safe? <laughs> John, you want to take that one, too? <laughs> that goes more into the... All right, so just, just so I understand the comment. So you've, you've got a bus with two devices on it, two, uh, two devices on the I squared C. Is that what you're describing? Okay, and, and actually the answer is yes. We, we do accommodate that, so there's, a cut, there's some separations on that. And if you were in Brandon's prior presentation, you would have seen that. What we do is we have the concept of the peripheral interfaces, devices sitting on the bus, so that you can share uh, the bus among multiple, devi multiple devices, and all of the SSP code is thread safe. You know, so I mean, the, the first, um, you know, the first assumption is, yeah, you're going to use the modules intact. If you run into problems, let us know. You know, because obviously if you're running into a problem, other people are going to run into a problem. But the intention is, yes, we've got that covered. And yes, we do accommodate multiple devices on the same bus. So the, the point is when you add a bus, it actually shows up under the HAL common. And then you get to, spe I mean, and that's one of the re things we've done. You know, if you go back far enough, if you've seen some of the earlier versions of this, those buses did kind of show up in random places. Now when they show up, they show up under the HAL common. And that's one of the purposes of the common is to collect those common pieces. All right. Good. All right. Let's continue. So the last... Last uh, configurator here is the ICU configurator. 
So that shows you all your um, all the the interrupts from the from the ICU, and you can see the list of interrupts, and you can you can assign you can click over here and assign it a priority, and that will be um, assigned to that particular interrupt. Now we made it a little easier um, to do the interrupts because because what you see more and more is actually um, the interrupts that are required for a certain module to actually show up here also in the properties and you can set them here right here directly so that's showing up more and more and then you would you actually don't need you actually don't need to go over to the ICU and, and, and select them there so that's making it easier um, so the last the last tab in that project editor is the components tab and Basically, the way the reason we put this all the way in the end is because you you it's you can use it as a quick uh, reference to see which kind of modules are pulled into your project. So any of these components that are tick marked, those are currently part of your project, and you can see which which version of of SSP they belong to. Um, but essentially, you you can just use it to verify because as soon as you on the threads on the threads tab, if you if you add a module or a driver uh, to a thread or to the HAL common, it'll automatically get ticked here. So you don't need to go both places. Um, but this gives you a good overview of, of what's currently in your project. Okay, so after you made, you came to the project editor, you made some, some modifications or configurations. If you, you know, want to rebuild or you want to uh, see what, what happened, you click on the project uh, generate project content button that's in the corner on, on every tab and essentially that will that will re regenerate re extract uh, and reconfigure the the project and here we have you saw that probably in Brandon's presentation earlier um, so in your in your project explorer pane or view um, this is your your source folder essentially there's also some some synergy generated stuff here which is um, uh, related to your threads and your 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 HAL, so in here you can make uh, you can make in the HAL entry and new thread entry you can make your own add your own user code. So that gets that gets regenerated and then um, this is the the SSP folder under the new Synergy folder that basically whatever BSP driver or framework. Uh, module or, or driver you, you, you brought into your project, this is where the sources will live. But again, like, like John said, it has SSP in the path, so don't touch it because yeah. whenever... You and, and I was just going to make that common act because you yeah. actually have up the 1.0 stuff here versus what they're seeing here at yeah, that's true. So that's true. I will retract my statement or modify it slightly versus the SSP. Yes. Anything with synergy in the path, which <laughs> didn't used to be in the path, okay. is don't touch that. Right. Yep. And then the basically last section is the um, those are the configurated header files. So for example, whenever you made a change to the pin configurator, this, this header file changes. If you change a clock setting, this header file changes. So these are the all the header files on the on the BSP driver and framework levels that configure all the modules. So it's all it's pretty clear. Um, and and uh, pretty, it, it gets pretty intuitive once you start working with it. Um, just want to highlight three other files that are part of your project. Uh, one is the configuration.xml. This is essentially the project editor. So if you if you actually open um, or if you open a new project that already exists in your workspace and you want to bring up that editor, you double click on the configuration.xml. That brings up your your editor with all the configurator, the configurators. Uh, this is just the debug, um, uh, the uh, debug session, and the dot pin config actually holds all your pin configurations that you made. So those are saved in this dot pin config file. So just one quick comment. I kind of yeah. brought this up, Axel, and it goes back to the earlier question of how do I add my stuff to yep. the, the whole system. Right. I mean, just, just so you understand, part of the reason why we made this directory structure change was from the, it used to be just SSP config, now it's Synergy config, SSP config, and the reason is, is 
the Renaissance uh, IoT group owns that, every, anything with an SSP, but we did was open up that whole synergy level for the third parties, for users to put their own stuff in. So, I mean, it is definitely the infrastructure is laid down. We're working on getting it cleaned up as far as making sure everybody can add their stuff because we definitely want to keep this as an open platform. All right. While we're on yeah. directory trees and stuff, uh, we like to use subversion. A lot of people do. Uh -huh. And are you going to maybe come up with an app note that tells us which files we need to include in subversion so we can... Uh, save the whole project and say another user can pull it down and mm -hmm. he's working on this latest version and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always, I mean, with IAR, it's beautiful. It's just two files you have to save. All right. With Eclipse, it's who knows how many. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, something we could, we yeah, could, so something we need to do. Well, we're already working. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Good. So we're coming close to the end here. Just want to show you that smart manual. Um, so when you this is this is an older version of the of the open call, but but essentially if you're if you're in if you're in, in the code and you're hovering over um, an API call to uh, the SSP, then it'll it'll the smart menu will pop up and it'll give you uh, additional information about that that uh, API and about that call. So you will have the, the name, the prototype, the parameters, and, and more information about this particular driver. OK. Um, we mentioned IR earlier. So just want to give you some hints of if you want to do, use IR, what you, what you need to do out of the box. So first of all, you do, you do need to have an installation of the embedded workbench for ARM because, I mean, that's where the, the IR compiler doesn't really. Sorry. I had a quick question about your smart documentation. Yeah. Is that something we can add to our own functions and stuff like that? So it'll pop up when other developers need to call our own functions? Well, this is, I mean, the, the Eclipse editor um, has a variety of hover functionality. So, so if you. Uh, that would be easier to do on that. I mean, our the smart manual, the way it's created, is, is a very specific way. And I don't think you would be able to use that exact functionality. But um, you might be able to use another, a different kind of hover function that's built into the, the Eclipse editor already. OK, okay so um, IAR. So you need to have the IAR embedded workbench installed and the IR compiler, because that's all one package from IR. And you also need to, um, if you want to do that, make sure to, under help, run the IR Embedded Workbench ARM plugin manager. Because before you can actually make that connection to, to IR, you need to have that plugin installed. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So you run the plugin manager. The plugin manager comes up, and uh, you select the ARM uh, target. And then basically you install the plugin that matches your, your version of the IR tools that you have. And after you do that, then when you create a new project, you will be able to, to pick IR from the list. Yeah, you install that plugin, OK? Um, I just want to spend a couple minutes going through some other uh, debug features that are part of eSquared Studio that are not necessarily Synergy specific, but that, that make eSquared Studio a good um, uh, environment. Well, before I actually go there, um, I mentioned earlier that the various um, things we put in there for artist aware debugging. So you have several, uh, you have a plugin in there that gives you information about um, the status of your operating system, your, your threads, um, whether they're suspended, whether they're, what the priority is, and so forth. So you, you get to that if you um, open the partner OS view. Under the Renesis views, you go to artist resources. That, that'll bring up those views. Um, then I also mentioned TraceX. So TraceX is a separate executable from a uh, separate tool from Express Logic. Usually, you have to pay extra for that. But for Synergy users, we have licenses. We have um, 
SpaceX is up on the gallery also for download. And you're able to uh, synchronize um, or, or invoke TraceX from within eSquared Studio and pass, you know, pass uh, data over to it so you can analyze um, what's going on in your, in your real-time system. So this is a very useful tool that I, I encourage you to, to use. Do you need a different debugger to use that? No, no, no. No, you don't need a different debugger. It goes, it basically, it fills, eSquared Studio fills up a buffer and when you want, you pass the buffer over to TraceX and it'll visualize everything. So that has nothing to do with with, uh, that doesn't go through the JTAG at all. Uh, there's an image viewer. If an image is stored in memory, you will see it in your window. There's a waveform viewer, same thing. If there's a waveform uh, stored in memory, you can see that as a waveform. Um, we have real-time expression views in here, so while your target's running, if you, can, you can see the, the value changing. Um, we have also these real-time expression, visual expression views in eSquared Studio, uh, so you can put some gauges or sliders or, or uh, meters in there. And essentially, if your variables change, you can graphically see them change while the target is running in, in real time. Um, you can also choose to graph these certain, certain variables, and you can see how the value is changing over time while the target is running. Uh, memory usage view gives you a good overview of how much RAM, how much ROM do I have left in my project. You know, am I getting close to hitting hitting the ceiling. And uh, so those were just some, some nice features in eSquared Studio that are available for other targets, but just to give you a, just a, a quick, quick highlight. Okay, so about to wrap up the session, um, things we looked at is, uh, you know, ISDE, how does it fit into the platform, um, the various components of the ISDE. We looked at the uh, project generator, quick way to generate a new Synergy project. And then we talked at length about um, the project editor and the various configurators that are in there for the pins, for the clocks, for the uh, RTUS threads, for the ICU, for the BSP. And what happens when you generate the project content? Um, you know, we saw the updated file structure. And again, like John said, um, in the labs, you're using a slightly older version of the SSP that has a slightly different structure. This already shows you, showed you the um, version 1.00 beta that's currently on the gallery. Um, so just be, be aware that there's slight difference there, what's in your lab, what you're using in the labs, and what are you, what, what's coming down from the gallery. Yes, real quick. So um, some of these waveforms that you're showing me, it, it looks like you're dangerously close to being able to emulate your application without hardware, is that something that... No, 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 that's not... That's is, that not something, is, is that something in the future maybe that if I, if I do uh, an application or if I have some sort of uh, implementation that developers don't need a hardware No, we're not, really, we're not really planning to do any simulator. This is just really um, showing you if you have something in memory that looks like a... a that, that shows you what it looks like, but it's not... We're not playing any peripheral simulator or anything like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, um, so what I encourage you to do is if you haven't, well, if you haven't signed up, it's already probably too late, but there's um, these design journey labs that go through you know, the design flow. There's three separate labs that uh, uh, deal with how to, how to create a project with Synergy, and obviously uh, the ISD is part of those, those labs. So if you're signed up, you're lucky. Um, if not, you have to maybe hope that somebody drops out. Um, but what anyone can do is just go and get it. You know, the Galaxy is up and live. Um, the gallery at synergygallery.renesis.com. You can grab the ISDE, download and install it. You can grab the SSP, download and install it. And I told you earlier, only a few of those project templates come with SSP, but we have additional project template application installers up there so that you can expand your, your application templates. And then you all got a starter kit already. Um, the development kits and the project examples, I don't think they're currently just yet at, at, at uh, the distributors, but they should be, you know, keep checking on, at DigiKey or Avnet or Future, those guys, uh, Arrow, they, they will have those kits in stock um, very, very shortly. And just when you get all this material in the, in the appendix, I have another uh, few slides with a workflow of what we went through in the, um, 
in the project flow. Okay, almost out of time. One more question. One more question, and I'll be around throughout the whole week. One more question. Yes, does Renesis uh, support uh, troubleshooting on ISDE? If I go into Eclipse and accidentally change some configuration parameter, it yeah. no longer works. Well, a lot of these have uh, restore to default buttons. I didn't mention that, but um, for example, in the clock configurator, there's a button called restore defaults. So if you mess it up. I'm more talking about Eclipse oh, issues. Eclipse you know, issues? You know, the, the, all, oh. all of the configuration that makes your debugger work with your compiler is all available to you, and you can mess it up. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's where we have a, a help desk. You can send us a, a ticket. So you do support it? Yeah, we do support okay. it. Yes. OK, good. All right. Uh, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.